Why, hello. Uh, this is a slideshow or a uh, talk that will allow you to learn why when you see some images, they're upside down and sometimes you're right side up. So if you're looking at objects in a mirror, sometimes you see yourself upside down in there. If you put the mirror way up close to you, you'll see yourself right side up and upside down, all right? And then sometimes you turn it over, you see yourself uh, right side up, but you kind of look a little bit of funny. So anywho, this is a presentation that will explain a little bit of the geometry and uh, a small amount of the algebra that will help explain the physics behind those various orientations of what you look like. Cool. All right. Um, so this is just entitled Done With Mirrors. This is a collection of pictures that I swiped <clears throat> from an old book here. But anywho, if we have an object that is far away from the front of that mirror, if that object is far away, then the image will appear upside down, which you can see it right there. It'll be a little smaller in size than the object itself. Uh, and you can kind of see where those pictures were taken. We're in a classroom. If you put that object, which is what O stands for, the uh, O means that's your object that you're looking at or that is creating the image, which is what the letter I stands for. Uh, you can see now, holy shnikes, that thing's a little larger than the object. Uh, and it's upright instead of upside down. And then over here, you can see the image is a little smaller uh, than the object. And so that is what uh, it would look like in this situation here. And those are the light rays. So this is showing you a little bit of the geometry behind it. When we draw light rays, we will say hi to ray. Hi, ray. Three different light rays. The first two um, are the ones that we really like to focus on. Uh, the third one is a nice one to use just to kind of double check that the first two are doing what they're supposed to, but you will go in parallel out through F. I will explain what that means in just a few. Uh, the second light ray you draw will approach the mirror through the focal point. When it bounces off the mirror, it will bounce off through, uh, or I'm sorry, parallel to what we will call the principal axis. And then in the third light ray you draw will be to kind of check that the first two are intersecting where they're supposed to in and out through the center completely unchanged and so uh, this is a series of sentences that just kind of describe what those images will end up looking like uh, when we talked about flat mirrors you were introduced to what virtual images are anytime you have to go behind a mirror or draw dotted lines do something that light rays don't normally want to do you're going to get something called a virtual image today. I'm going to introduce you to a real image, meaning it's actual, real, honest, the goshness, light rays intersecting, forming an image. It will be uh, inverted. It'll be upside down. It'll be smaller. Sometimes the image will be virtual. It'll be upright and bigger. Sometimes it'll be virtual, upright, and smaller, whatever. So if you have a concave mirror, which is the type of mirror that would be looking at the spoon in this orientation. So I'm looking in a concave mirror. If you are far away from the mirror, which is what that O is, uh, you will have this type of image. It will be real. It'll be inverted. It'll be smaller, which is what they're showing you here. Uh, there's two spots about this mirror. This mirror is a circle or part of a circle. We'll call them spherical. Sometimes they refer to them as parabolic. That'll be a little more uh, of an advanced type of situation. But uh, if you're part of a circle, then I promise that circle has a center. That's what the C stands for. So the radius of curvature of this particular mirror will be labeled with that letter C. The thing to remember is half of that radius is where the letter F will always be. So the focal point of this particular mirror or any spherical mirror is half of the radius. So C is always 2F. F is always half a C. That's just the thing to remember. And so what you'll do, you'll draw your mirror in the middle of that 
arc length or section of the circle, you'll draw a line called the principal axis. Uh, that principal axis is there solely for reference. It doesn't really exist. It's there just to give you a reference point. That's what you will be going in parallel to or bouncing out parallel with. Uh, you put your object, which we typically use arrows when we draw objects because they're easy to tell if they're right side up or upside down. Uh, Images, again, you can easily tell, and candles, again, are another thing that's easy to tell if you're right side up or upside down. So, anywho, first thing to do is draw that arc length, draw the parallel axis label C and F. Uh, and if C isn't smack in the middle, it's okay. Just make sure that F and C are to scale half or twice of each of R. Cool. So, when you do that, uh, this is just a uh, in a large version of that picture, it's kind of neat to see that that's the object there. This is the image. This is the image of the camera that actually took the picture. You're obviously in a classroom setting. It's just kind of neat to see. So this diagram, this one, is the one that I want you to be able to recreate. So once you draw that arc length, that is the section of the circle, and this line that, again, is the principal axis, label C, label F, uh, draw an object in this particular situation somewhere farther away than the center. The object will be an arrow. Now, remember, the first light ray, the light ray labeled number one here, will approach the mirror parallel. So this light ray right there goes in parallel. When it does that, you can tell if you were to throw something at a wall shaped like this, that something would bounce off the wall down in that direction. The way you know where it's going to bounce off is it will always bounce off through the focal point. So light ray number one, high ray in parallel out through F. That will always be the case. The second light ray will go in through F and out parallel. So it's kind of the backwards version of the first one. So this one goes in through F, hits the wall or hits the mirror right there. When it does so, it bounces off parallel. You can tell those two light rays intersect right there. And a way to kind of triple check if that is, in fact, a happy diagram is there is a third light ray that will go in and bounce out through that center right there. And it won't change its direction at all. So if they all three intersect right there, then you get the same thing of where they all three originated right there. So those light rays that are bouncing off that object, whatever that object is, the three that we could, I mean, there's an infinite number of light rays bouncing off of anything, but the three we'll keep track of move in that direction, in that orientation where those three originated is the same thing as to where those three intersect. They create the same object or the same image. So the image where those three intersect is the tip of an arrow, the same way as where they all three intersect right there is the tip of an arrow. Draw it standing on the principal axis so you can tell this arrow is now upside down. It's smaller uh, and it is a real image. What makes it real is all of these light rays are honest to goshness real light rays. They haven't been traced behind the mirror. They're not doing something they wouldn't normally want to do. Those are real light rays. This is a real image. What we'll do in class, you'll be able to pro project that image onto a wall, a sheet of paper, a screen, anything, you can actually project that image. It is a very real image, um, and we'll be able to uh, manipulate that or, or mess around it. So if the light rays do what they normally wish to do and intersect, you get what's called a real image, smaller uh, and upside down. So that is a concave mirror if you're far away. Now, if you get Closer. What if we bring that object right up to the mirror closer than the focal point, which is what this picture is showing you here. You can tell the image is upright and larger. What we'll do is we'll show you why it's a virtual image or the mechanism, the physics geometry behind it is you have to trace the light rays back behind the mirror. You know, light rays don't naturally go behind the mirror. These dotted lines, they don't exist. So we refer to that as a virtual image. What your eyeballs see are the reflected light rays and your eyeballs are stupid. They don't know the difference between a reflected light ray and an actual light ray. So your eyeball interprets them as coming from somewhere behind the mirror, which is why we refer to it as virtual. 
This is an up close version of that picture. The object is closer than the focal length. And it's kind of neat to see that this is the image of the candle that's very close to it. This is the image of the camera that took the picture, which you can tell is upside down. So I just think that, that's a neat photo. Um, again, what you'll start with is this curved section of the mirror. Uh, you will label C and F. Uh, where again, F is half the center, half the radius. Just when you now put your object in, draw an arrow standing on the principal axis, pointing upwards. And uh, now you draw the exact same three light rays. So what I'll do is I will go in parallel to the principal axis. When I hit that mirror, I will bounce off the mirror and I will go through the focal point. So this light ray is doing the exact same thing we did before. Remember, if you're looking in the mirror, your eyeballs are going to be over here somewhere. Your eyeball can't tell the difference between this reflected light ray and a light ray that's not reflected. So what your eyeball does is it takes that reflected light ray and it thinks it originated somewhere behind the mirror. And so these dotted lines now, those dotted lines are virtual. They don't exist. They're not real. Your eyeball just thinks they are. And so that dotted line going behind the mirror means Schneikies are probably going to have a virtual image. The second light ray is going to, again, go into the mirror through the focal point. So we're going to have to start down here or somewhere hit the tip of that arrow, bang into the mirror. When we do, we will reflect parallel to the principal axis. Again, if your eyeball's out here, it doesn't know that light ray has been reflected. Your eyeball thinks it came from somewhere behind the mirror. So that dotted line, again, means it's going to be virtual. Those dotted lines don't exist. Um, to, to kind of triple check that those two are intersecting in a happy place, you can go in and out through the center, uh, extend that light ray backwards, and you can see where all three of them intersect right there. You will get the tip of an arrow the same way as where they all three originated right there. You get the tip of an arrow. And so this is now your image. It's on the back side of the mirror. It is intersected. It's formed by your eyeballs. Your brain thinks it's there. It's not real. It's not really there. So this is a virtual image. It's upright. It's larger. Uh, and that's when you are up close to the mirror. Now you could turn that mirror around or turn that spoon around that I was messing with. Now you have a convex mirror. These are the kind of mirrors you see in convenience stores, grocery stores, uh, hospital hallways, um, sometimes at the end of of driveways or in roads that have curves on them, whatever. But anyway, you're, you're getting a wider field of view here. You can uh, see now we have a focal length on the back of the mirror because now the mirror is curving towards you. So if I'm looking at it like this, the center of this curvature is on the opposite side of me. So it's over there. And what we're saying is not shnikes, that F is on the opposite side of the mirror. And so is that center. So there's where you're at. You can see this is the image of the candle. This is the image of the camera that took the picture. It's just kind of a neat thing. This is a virtual image again. Uh, even though it's upright, it can see it, it looks a little smaller. So this is an up uh, an up close version of that picture. Uh, it's just again a neat thing to see. This is the light ray diagram. All right, draw your mirror. Put the F and the C in place, remembering that the F is half the C. Just make sure that that focal length and center are on the opposite side of the mirror as your object, which is over here. You'll still draw that principal axis now. The first light ray that you draw will always approach the mirror parallel to the principal axis. So that's what this one is. Now you can tell when this object bow, or when this light ray or anything, if you were to throw a ball, at a wall that has this shape, you can tell that thing's going to reflect upwards somewhere. It's going to bounce off going up. It's not going to go through the focal length. So the one word we're going to change is instead of in parallel out through F, what we're going to say is it's going to come out as though it came from the F. So it will go in parallel out from the focal length and bounce off going upwards somewhere. The way you know where is it as if it came from the F. So in parallel out from F, remember that dotted line there is a virtual line. That light ray doesn't exist once it becomes dotted. 
So where that is, this is going to be another virtual image. The other one will go in through F. Now, remember we said in the previous uh, examples, it goes in through F. Well, the focal length is on the back of the mirror in this case. So I'm going to change one word. I'm not going to say it's going to go in through F. I'm going to say it's going to go in towards F. So this will go in towards F. But darn it, there's the mirror in the way, and the light ray will bounce off that mirror, and it will bounce off parallel to the principal axis. So the second light ray in towards F, out parallel. And remember, what your eyeball sees is that reflected light ray. So the one that your eyeball interprets is the one that bounces off the mirror. And so that's the one you extend backwards into the mirror, go through the looking glass. Someone should write a book. Um, that's the one that your eyeball sees. The third light ray, again, to just kind of triple check the other two intersecting in a happy place. We'll go in and out from or towards or through the center. It's, uh, that light ray would love to go through the center, but dang it, there's a mirror in the way, so it bounces off. That's what your eyeball extends into. So where they all three intersect is an image. Uh, you get the tip of an arrow the same way you get the tip of an arrow here where they all three originated. This is, again, behind the mirror. These dotted lines don't exist. They are virtual. So this is a virtual image. It happens to be upright and is a tad smaller. The reason I put this picture in here, one, because it's adorable, two, the uh, phrase that it says objects in mirror are closer than they appear. This type of mirror is the one that is on the side view of the cars that have that uh, written on them. Now, there's some math that's involved in this. It's not the most difficult math, but there is a little bit of math. There's H, H's, the heights of images and objects. So H will stand for height. Uh, it's pretty easy to remember. I is an image. O is an object. There are D is distances. Those distances are how far the image is how far the object is. Remember when we had a flat plane mirror, we did that activity. You said, well, gosh, wherever you put the object in front of the mirror, the image was an equal distance behind the mirror. Once you start curving those mirrors, that's no longer the case. So we have what's called a negative DI divided by a DO. I'll show you that that negative sign means there are positive and negative sides to a mirror. And the M represents a magnification factor. So uh, that, I think, is a self-defining word. If you're larger, if your image is larger, you'll have a magnification factor that's greater than one. If your image is smaller, you'll have a magnification factor that's a decimal, a point, something, whatever. Uh, so an example, whatever, fine. We have a concave mirror. That means the mirror looks like this. It's curving away from you. It's got a radius of 40 centimeters. Remember that radius 40 is where you put the C, that's the center, which means the focal length is only half that. The F in this case is 20 centimeters. And this one is okay, it's got a magnification factor of four. Let's put a five centimeter tall object 15 centimeters in front of the mirror. Fine, whatever. Where is that image located? All right, so what we'll do is have this as the drawing. This is that section of the mirror that we choose to draw. We've labeled C and F. If we could extend the section of that circle for a, or that section of that mirror for a full circle, that would be the center of it. This F is half that distance. So if that F is 20, because it's half the center, and we place an object 15 centimeters from it, that means we're closer to the mirror than the focal point. So that's the second of the two examples I gave you uh, a little bit ago. The M is 4, the H is 5, C, a D, O, D, I. Fine. So anywho, this is part of that equation that we talked about. M is negative DI over DO. So you can use any one of these two fractions, or you can even put these two fractions equal to each other. Any combination of these will be the math that you can use. A negative DI over DO. This is uh, rearranging it because it wants to know where the image is. An image is a distance I, a DI. That's an image distance. So just rearrange it. Take the negative side over, and it's 4 times 15 is a DI. Now it has a negative sign in front of it. Okay, what that negative means is another 
way to mathematically communicate, hey, you're behind the mirror 60 centimeters instead of in front of the mirror, because what light rays naturally want to do is stay in front of a mirror. So for images on a mirror, a positive side is in front of the mirror where you can where not where light rays naturally stay. If you start drawing dotted lines, you're going behind the mirror. This image is a virtual image. Well, the way you mathematically communicate to the world, hey, that image is virtual, it doesn't really exist, is with a negative sign. If you go behind the mirror, you go through the looking glass, uh, that's a negative image distance. So that's why there's a negative sign in front of that DI. There's another equation that's used uh, a lot when dealing with mirrors and lenses. Uh, it's even referred to as a thin lens equation. It initially looks kind of scary because there's a lot of fractions, but I'll show you it's actually a very easy equation to manipulate. So the exact same question is the previous one, 40 centimeter radius, magnifications four, five centimeter, tall object, 50, where is it? Okay, this equation, one over F, remember F is the focal length. Uh, DO is the distance that the object is, DI in this case is what we're looking for. So we have fractions, they're all inverses of one another. So some students freak out when they see that and I'll show you a very easy way to type it. It'll look just like that. But anyway, what you'll do is take one over F is equal to one over DO plus one over DI. The inverse of the focal length is equal to the inverse of the object distance added to the inverse of the image distance. It's that simple. So if you start with that equation, in this particular case, it wants to know a DI. So all I did was I pushed the minus button, moved the DO over one over F minus one over DO. Well, shnikes, that's one over DI. Fine. Uh, what I did is I took one over 20, which is the focal length. Remember, 20 is half the center. So there's the focal length. I subtracted one over 15 from it. Fine, that equals 1 over di. That's 1 over the image distance. Now, if we were in fifth grade learning how fractions work, then your teacher would make you find a common denominator and go through 12 steps of math, whatever. We don't need to do that. We're, you know, in high school here, we have magic boxes. All you got to do is push the inverse button, which makes it a much, much, much easier mathemological exercise. So what I'll do is I'll open a set of parentheses and I'll take 20 to the negative one. Hopefully you guys all know that to the negative one means it's the inverse of 20. From that, I'm going to subtract 15 raised to the negative one power. That just means the inverse of 15. And whatever that quantity is, I'm going to have to take the inverse of that also, which gives me the uh, object, or I'm sorry, the image distance. So if you type it just like that, I'm telling you, it will, uh, it'll get you that answer. So the parentheses that you get the exact same answer as we did before the one over uh, 20 minus one over 15, then take one over that answer gives you that image distance. So what I can do to uh, show you how that works is here. Let me clear this. What I will do is I'll open a parentheses and I will take 20 and I'll raise it to the negative one power. To that, I will subtract 15 and I will raise that to the negative one power and I will close it and I will take that answer and take that to the negative one power. So this, again, is exactly what this says here. Push enter and you get negative 60. So it's the exact same uh, mathemological procedure. So that equation looks scary. Uh, it really isn't. It's just once you have a magic box that has the ability to do the inverse buttons, you are. And so now you are done with mirrors. Just remember three light rays in parallel out through F, in through F out parallel, in and out through C. And then those two equations, the HIs over the HOs, the negative DIs over DOs, and the inverse of the F is the same thing as the inverse of DO plus the inverse of the DI.